Hemolytic anemias are a group of anemias where there is an early destruction of red blood cells. This leads to a mismatch between red blood cell production and destruction. The types of hemolytic anemias can be broken into two, those that are acquired and those that are congenital. Firstly, acquired can be further subdivided into two, immune acquired such as autoimmune, drug induced immune or transfusion immune, whilst the non-immune includes infections like malaria and bacterial infections or some traumas. Whilst congenital disorders are intrinsic to the red blood cell itself, affecting its membrane, the enzymes and the haemoglobin. Two types of haemoglobin congenital issues can be sickle cell anemia and thalassemias, which we'll focus on now. Firstly, with the thalassemias, thalassemias are an inherited mutation of the haemoglobin molecule that causes a decrease in synthesis of the globulin chain, either the alpha or beta. This causes an imbalance in the number of globulin chains in the red blood cell itself, which ultimately leads to the red blood cell destruction, thus hemolytic anemia. Whereas sickle cell anemia, there's a, the mutations in the beta chain, which causes the red blood cell to adopt its well-known phenotypical shape, the sickle shell, the sickle shape. Now, moving to the clinical manifestations of these two, Firstly, the clinical manifestations of thalassemias can be broken into two. Those that affect the urethroproesis and, that's, and those that affect the hemolytic side of things. Firstly, with urethroproesis, it's really ineffective, which causes the red blood cells to become small, thus microcytic, and dull coloured, which is hyperchromic. Further, the ineffective urethropoiesis causes an increase in urethropoiesis, which can lead to bone deformities, thus to the face or skull, and an increase in likelihood of bone fractures. Though the effect in the hemolytic side of things causes an increase in amount of red blood cell destruction, most notably in the spleen and liver, causes causing those two organs to swell and releasing a lot of bilirubin into the blood that can cause further jaundice. Another side effect is an increase in iron in the blood which can cause damage to the liver, can cause damage to the heart leading to heart failure and accumulation in the, in the skin which causes a bronzing colouring. If untreated, uh, thalassemias will eventually lead to death it can be treated with blood transfusion or possibly can be cured with a bone marrow transplant. Moving now to sickle cell anemia, the clinical manifestations really follow a typical anemia. So all the side effects with anemias, such as tiredness, dizziness, lethargy, etc. is common. However, with the hemolytic side, there's going to be similar to thalassemias, possible jaundice, an increase in bilirubin and a swelling of the spleen. However, an added difference is that the sickle cells can get stuck in small arteries that can cause infarctions to bones, liver.